Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tyson Sider and today I have a tutorial that's going to show you how to create some BIG diagrams. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. First I'm going to talk about these BIG diagrams, why they are called BIG diagrams, because basically they're just concept diagrams. Now, the reason they're called BIG is because BIG, Bjork Engels, he does these the best and he's very famous for it. Now, the reason why we do concept diagrams is to show people and to show the, our clients and our investors and stakeholders or even our lecturers mainly that how we have came from our initial design to the final design and the main changes throughout the project. Now, these concept diagrams, they also give an idea and they make it clear for yourself to where your concept has come from and how it looks at the end and to give a relationship between your initial design and your final design and to make it clear to what you have changed in each of these steps. Now, you can do, for example, 10 different steps or what you mainly would do about three, four, up to five steps. And this diagram is only has four steps. Before we get into the tutorial, I just want to mention one thing. The people at BenQ, they have sent me a product which is called a screen bar, which is really, really cool. And I have used it ever since. And that's the only light I use. And it's amazing. Now, further on that later on. So stay tuned. The first things I did was created four actual diagrams of the actual building. The fourth one was actually the existing building which I just copied and pasted in place. The other three diagrams are literally simpler versions. Now what you could do is just backtrack and just leave this till the end and then come back and just and make it simpler. That's up to you. Now this is the actual building in context so you get an idea on how the building looks like. This is like a community center, church, activity center which is a group project in my masters, which is the first project of my masters. Now what you need to make sure is that, that all of your diagrams are actually in layers. Now what this does, it makes it much easier to just turn on and off layers and rendering rather than creating four different scenes. So what you then want to do is go to camera, go to parallel projection and make sure that it is in axonometric view. After you choose your view, make sure that you at least add one scene so that you always have the same angle and then make sure that you change your layer style to hidden lines. This will just give a black and white view which is exactly what you want in the rendering preview. Now I am using Enscape which is an amazing tool which I find is something really good for quick and easy simple diagram. The first things you want to do is to make sure that your mode is to white out of all of them. Now Enscape itself has loads of different options that you can do. You can add outlines, you can make them bright, you can make it cool, you can make it warm, change the contrast, the texture. Now this is easy to do now so that you have to do less work in Photoshop. I then added the shadows. The shadows I wanted to make it very small so that it doesn't detract from any of the renders. Now all of these settings are up to you, you can make it look however you want. I recommend to make it as black and white as possible. If this doesn't work then it is something that we can change in Photoshop. All you then need to do is go to extension, Enscape and take screenshot. This will take the actual render for you. The first things I did in the actual Photoshop file is to change the brightness and contrast. This just makes it a little bit more white because I just found that it had a little bit of grey. I then recommend that you go to add a black and white filter. Now this just makes it a little bit more white and black rather than having a bit of grey. Now I recommend just messing about until you find exactly what you want really. That's what all Photoshop is, it's really trial and error. Now the first things I'm doing is adding a bit of green to show how we've incorporated green spaces into the design. Now this is because the project that we're doing it has very little green space in the site. We said that adding green space is one of the prioritized features to add into this project. So I'm just using the, the poly lasso tool to just create the shapes and then adding a light green fill. What I also recommend is to add a texture of a green green grass texture. You can use any kind of grass, it's up to you. But something that has a good quality of texture just so that it doesn't make the color look a bit blurry. You should then change the actual type to be color overlay. 
so do whichever one you think shows the contact the texture the most. Now with these BIG diagrams, what I have realized is that they all have a black outline. This just makes the actual building pop out from a context and you can really see it in the final result. This I just did with using the pen tool and Photoshop. And then clicking shape and then it becomes an actual shape which you can then change again to whatever shape you want. Make sure that the actual thickness isn't too thick because then it just looks a bit weird but you can see how it really looks good. Now for the last one I'm adding a realistic render of the building. I did this just because it's nice to show how the final building looks in the final diagram. Now to make sure that they aligned up what I did is I created a grid line to the top of this image to the bottom of the image. This just makes it really easy for me to scale it up and down and having to faff around with zoom in, zoom out, scale numbers and all of that. Again on this diagram what I did is I just added a stroke all around the building. I then just found a red arrow on the internet and I just kept one in the middle just so that you always have a copy of the original. Now on this diagram what I'm showing is I'm showing how we have lowered and stepped down the atrium and kitchen area to add a viewing platform and a rooftop garden. On the third diagram I'm showing about, talking about the entrances, how we have pushed in the entrance to add a kind of a courtyard space. Now I then realized that these arrows were a bit too thick and it just made, it, made the diagram look really black and really dark. So I just made them a bit smaller and um, moved them around. What I then want to do is to show how the green spaces on the south has pulled out for the actual kitchen. Now what I then did is I just changed the numbers on the top as you can see, you can use these, these same numbers to get the same angle. And then once again did this on the top to show how we are changing the roofs and making the building a little little bit smaller. On the final diagram I'm talking about how the roof has, has been pushed down on, on only two angles of each side to create a hyperbolic probolite roof. Once again I'm taking the arrows from the previous one just to keep consistency and I'm talking about how the curtain walling systems have been used to allow people to look out into the garden space. Now one of the things I'm doing now is I'm creating my own viewing angle. It's like to show how people are viewing the space and I just thought if I do it myself it would be much more clear than to find an image of it. Now all I'm doing is creating a circle and then I'm again using the pen tool to create like a funnel. So what I'm doing now is I'm changing the perspective of the actual image to give it so that it fits in with the same axonometric view of the diagrams and I'm, and I'm putting them on spaces where I have created specific features to allow for these views. Now one of the important things is that when you do this kind of work it's important to know how you're going to put those into a layout. Because yes, we show uh, tutorials and renders and all these fancy drawings, but how do you present them in your work? So here you can see that I have laid them out in a InDesign file. Very simply, just four boxes of these diagrams. A bit of text, say concept one, two, three, and four. And you can see all of the grid lines because this was um, like a group project and they sent a template. And this is the final product. I personally really like it and I'm really happy with how it came out. Now back to the screen bar. Now this screen bar, it has a yellow and white LEDs inside. So it can give you warm light and can also give you cool light. As you can see, you can also change the brightness by clicking the buttons on the left. Now what you can see how a traditional light gives a lot of glare 
and it's really uncomfortable to look at and you're looking directly into the light. With the BenQ screen, it never actually touches the screen, which is really, really good. Now the actual ball rotates as well, which is really handy if you don't want it to shine too much on your screen. The BenQ screen bar has four buttons, manual dimming, hue adjustment, auto dimmer, and the power button. The quality of the product is a really nice metal finish. It comes in three parts and all you need is to fit in the USB and the two parts together and you're ready. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.